so hello welcome everyone to the video lecture 4 of group theory so in the last lecture we have seen uh, s3 and we have seen cyclic groups so in this lecture we are going to see subgroups so let us uh, start with the definition of subgroup what is a subgroup So let suppose G is a group, let G be a group, as you know subgroup and H be a non-empty subset of G. When H is said to be a subgroup, H is said to be a subgroup. H is said to be a subgroup of G if uh, H itself is a group H itself is a group under the operation of G see here in the book it is written instead of operation it is written under multiplication in G but we don't write multiplication because multiplication or product when they say this word it does not mean actually multiplication the group can be anything it can be an additive group the binary operation could be anything so it is uh, h is a subgroup of g if h itself is a group under the operation of g right. so for example uh, let us consider some examples first example which should come to our mind is the simplest example which is also a trivial example why it is called trivial because if G is any group then th there are trivial subgroups for any group G singleton identity and G itself they are trivial subgroups of G or we also write improper because they are improper subsets right? they are trivial or improper subgroups of G sometimes we just call trivial as this one not G but uh, we also use trivial for both so they are trivial subsets or improper subsets so they are called trivial subgroups or they are called improper subgroups of G right. so this is the first simplest example for any group we have two subgroups uh, but they are not interesting because they are we know they are anyway groups so what is interesting is some non-trivial examples so always we look for some non-trivial examples so now let us consider uh, G to be uh, the set of integers with addition that is uh, Z plus we have seen this is a group right? and subgroup H as we are discussing the Google Meet also so here I am considering 5z right so integers which are multiples of 5 and we verify that uh, this is a subgroup we quickly verify the first condition is uh, closure property so if I take any x y in h the x will be of the form 5k k1 y will be of the form 5k2 and so x plus y you see x plus y you have to consider the same operation as that of g not any other operation right h is a subgroup of g if h itself is a group under the operation of g whatever the binary operation in g we have taken and so h if it, h is a subset of g we have to consider the same uh, operation so x plus y will be 5 times uh, k1 plus 
5 k2 so that is 5 k1 k2 this belongs to h this is uh, again an integer k1 plus k2 so this belongs to 5 sets so uh, it is closed second is associative so if we take any x y z in h so then x y z also belongs to g because h is subset of g and if x y z belongs to g then we have and because g is a group so we have associativity in g so x plus y plus z equals to x plus y sorry x plus y plus z right so for any x y z in h because they are elements of g and g is a group associativity holds now identity what about identity in the multiples of phi set of all multiples of phi zero is identity so zero belongs to uh, h zero belongs to phi z five into zero so zero belongs to h and zero is identity because uh, for any x in h for any x in h x plus uh, zero equals to x equals to zero plus x so zero is identity so it has identity and finally inverse fourth property let x belongs to h then uh, minus x also belongs to h so if x equals to 5k minus x equals to minus 5k which is nothing but phi of uh, minus k so this is also belongs to phi z right so and x plus minus x equals to 0 equals to minus x plus x just like in the set of integers so no 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 change here no no difference so it satisfies all the properties of group closure property associativity identity and every element has an inverse so this is also a group phi z with addition is also a group but because it is a subset of set of integers g is the set of integers so because phi z is subset of z therefore uh, h is a subgroup of g now the question is which we already discussed that do we need to check all these four properties for example if you observe here associative property this follows from the group g so associativity actually we have not checked in phi z multiples of phi what we remarked that g is a group all these three elements any element any set of three elements in h is are in g and because g is a group associativity holds so actually this is not required when checking that h is a subgroup so this is not required also if you observe if we have a closure property and inverse then identity is there why because every element has an inverse so if we uh, take operation of x and x inverse then what do we get we get zero but then if we assume closure property then the operation also belongs to h so zero belongs to h so that automatically comes in h this we already discussed in the google meet yesterday so i'm not going to detail already the video link is uh, given in the lecture notes so I, I start I remark lemma here yeah so this is uh, the lemma so let G be a group and H be a non-empty subset of G then the following are equivalent so first condition is uh, h is a subgroup of g let me write second here so what is the second condition h we assume two conditions h is closed uh, with respect to the operation of g and every element in h has inverse in h okay i, I forgot i think uh, inverse in h 
yeah so here uh, anyway this is just the example we have taken so h is closed under the operation of g and every element in h has an inverse in h this is important inverse in h because every element of h is uh, definitely an element of g so it has an inverse because g is a group but inverse should be in h the inverse also should lie in h if i take x belongs to h x inverse is there because x is in g but the x inverse also should belongs to should belong to h so these two properties are sufficient because if we take x x inverse so x so if i take x because every element has an inverse in h x inverse also is in h and by the closer closer property x star x inverse which is identity which belongs to h so anyway the associativity and the identity follows so 2 implies 1 1 clearly implies 2 so if we combine these two closed under the operation of g and inverse then we can directly say this so instead of checking this two separately we can check like this for every a b for every a b in for every a b in h not g for every a b in h a b inverse also should belong to h so this is the two properties combined so if i take b in h b inverse also is in h and closure a is in h b inverse is in h a b inverse is in h so this does the two properties combined together and not only that we can also take uh, a inverse b so for every just similarly we can write like this for every uh, a b in h a inverse b also belongs to h Right. So, these are the four equivalent statement. Try to prove this. I think we have discussed uh, mostly uh, 1, 2, and 3. 4 is similar in the Google Meet. So, I leave this uh, proof as an exercise for you. So, proof I leave as uh, an exercise. It is also left as exercise in the notes. So, this proof I leave as exercise yeah so so whenever we want to show some subset is a subgroup what we actually show is then we can show any one of this right so to show any subset or h of a group g is a subgroup uh, we can show any one of this equivalently h is a subgroup of this so but in particular if h is finite subset of a group G then H is a subgroup with only one condition that is closure so let me state that so this also is an exercise for you this lemma let H be a finite non empty subset of a group G then H is a subgroup of G so again the proof is exercise I will give you the hint So here uh, we are given H is finite non-empty subset. Then oh H is a subgroup of G. If uh, sorry I forgot to write. Then H is subgroup of G if it is closed under the operation of G. Right. So if H is finite, then we have an advantage. We have to just check only one property closed under the operation of 
जी सो लेट मी गिव यू अंट सो वी वॉन्ट टू शो दैट इफ एच इज क्लोज एंड द ऑपरेशन ऑफ जी देन एच इज अ सब ग्रुप ऑफ जी सो वी कैन यूज एनी ऑफ दिस फोर प्रॉपर्टीज सो वी कैन यूज द सेकेंड वन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ सेकेंड इज सेटिस्फाइड दैन वी नो ऑल दिस आर इक्वल एंड फॉर द प्रीवियस लेमा सो इवन द फर्स्ट ऑल्सो विल बी सेटिस्फाइड सो टू शो दैट एच इज अ सब ग्रुप ऑफ जी वॉट वी आर गिवन हियर एच इज क्लोज एंड द ऑपरेशन ऑफ जी सो इन द सेकेंड दिस पार्ट इज गिवन क्लोज एंड द ऑपरेशन ऑफ जी सो वॉट इज रिमेनिंग एवरी एलिमेंट हैज एन यूनिवर्स सो सो यू फॉलो हियर वी आर गिवन फाइनेट सो हियर वी आर गिवन एच इज अ फाइनेट सबसेट and h is closed under the operation of g and here in this two condition closed under the operation of g that is given but we are not given inverse so somehow if we use the fact that h is finite and show that every element in h has an inverse in h then we are done closure is already given inverse baki hai karna hai but we are given h is finite so use this and show that every element has an inverse in h so what you do take an element a in h take a square a cube a power 4 power 4 means a star a star a star a and then so on the group is finite we are given the group is finite so at some stage a power n it is again going to be identity then using that fact show that every element has an inverse in h i'm sure this we must have done in bsc but even if you are not done this is an easy exercise it is given Uh, with proof in hurstein very simple proof only thing you have to use uh, that h is finite and show that every element a in h has an inverse in h then by the this lemma we are done right okay so in this case uh, i leave this as exercise because it's very simple proof and now consider some more examples so now we know now examples will be easy we don't have to check all the four properties we know which properties to check and if it is finite uh, which property to check so let us consider some more examples so first two examples we have seen there so this third example so let g be a group of uh, real numbers with addition so g equals to r plus real numbers set of all reals with addition and h is z plus set of all integers with addition this is a group we you know and it is subset of this so no, no no need to check this we already checked in the first lecture z plus is a group and r plus is also a group and obviously h is subset of g so it is a group right similarly uh, one can take uh, non zero reals with multiplication so let g equals to uh, we can take r minus 0 with uh, multiplication this is sometimes also denoted by r star like this what is r star star means uh, zero is removed so all non zero real numbers with multiplication because zero does not have inverse so we have to remove zero for any x 1 upon x is the inverse when multiplication is there one is the multiplicative identity and h h you can consider to be any any subgroup any uh, this so let us consider this q plus Like positive rationals we can also take h to be uh, non zero rationals that is also fine or h equals to as you must have guessed if it is r star dot then why not q star dot that is also rational number two multiplication again it's a rational number right and uh, q plus q plus is what this is a uh, set of all positive rationals so q star so here zero is removed and here zero is anyway not there so set of all positive rationals so this is a subgroup uh, another example see first example we have considered in the first lecture that was that clock remember that analog clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock and then after 12 o'clock again we don't have 13 we have 1 and again 2 hours after 12 o'clock we have 2 so it is all modulo 2 so z12 0 1 2 up to 
12 again is again for us that is 0 that is identity every element has an inverse so this and uh, this is addition modulo 12 you add two numbers if they are more than 12 then take the remainder dividing by take take the remainder when we obtain by dividing by 12 so that is addition modulo 12 so what about subgroup of this so uh, let us take g equals to this and uh, h equals to if i take 0 3 6 9 is it a subgroup it's a subset all 0 to 11 are there in z12 and then we have to consider this operation addition modulo 12 not any other operation same operation as of g so how do we check if there is a subgroup so here we need to check only one thing uh, which is closure property why because this is a finite set h is a finite set and by this lemma if h is a finite non-empty sub subset of a group g then h is subgroup if it is uh, closed under the operation of g so we have to just check whether it is closed under the operation of g or not right so it you one can check addition of any three numbers six plus three nine it is there three plus nine twelve but modulo twelve it is zero so that is also there six plus nine fifteen what is fifteen modulo twelve three it is there so it is closed under the operation of g modulo twelve all this integers uh, the set is closed right so that is also a subgroup one can take other examples for example matrices uh, we had considered this gl2 r right set of all um, matrices with a non zero determinant and so suppose this is our g invertible matrices so h we can consider to be matrices of this form a b 0 d such that determinant is non-zero so such that ad is non-zero so this entry row 2 column 1 a21 must be 0 so that is a subset of uh, instead of all this is matrix also is invertible because ad is non-zero so it is subset of g this is also a subgroup so h is a subgroup of g in this case all this you can verify only two properties now you have to verify either a b inverse directly you can verify or show that uh, it is closed under the operation of g and it, it has uh, an inverse every element in uh, h has an inverse in h so that is one thing and again consider h as above and take one more set k k to be special matrices of this type 1 d 0 1 and we don't have to worry about so b is any real number because the determinant is uh, anyway it is it is one right so k is a subset of h k is also a subset of g and uh, we can check k is a subgroup of h if h is a group so k is subset of h k itself is also a group then h is a subgroup of sorry k is a subgroup of h and so k is also subgroup of g k is subset of h h is a group k is also a group so k is a subgroup of h h is subset of g g is a group so h is subgroup of g so k is also a subset of g so k is also a subgroup of g so k is a subgroup of h and h is subgroup of g then k is subgroup of g so so k is also a subgroup of g so in first lecture if you remember we had considered as first and second lecture uh, set of all 1 1 and 0 2 functions right as g equals to a s and we have shown that this is a group 1 1 1 2 functions from s to s so g equals to a s and consider uh, its subgroup so consider h x 0 for some x 0 in g so for, for a x 0 in s s is the set non empty set so for some x 0 in s consider h x 0 is set of all those functions in G so all those functions in AS 
one 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 two functions from s to s which fixes x zero that means f of x zero equals to x zero so it fixes x zero baki bada change thai x zero ni image change nahi thai so x zero is not changed so f of x zero is x zero all such functions one 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 two functions so then show that h x zero is a subgroup of uh, G, right? So any element you take and take H x zero. So set of all functions which fixes x zero. So suppose we take two uh, two elements. So for suppose we have two elements x zero and x one in S, and suppose these two are distinct. So x zero is not equals to x one. So then we have two subgroups H x zero, this one. What is h x one? H x one equals to set of all f in A S, f in G, such that f of x one is x one, which fixes x one. So then, what can we say about uh, intersection of h x zero and h x one? So what can we say about the intersection? H x zero intersection. H x one. H x zero is this. H x one is H x one equals to f belongs to G. All such functions which fixes x one. F of x one equals to x one. What can be said about the intersection? What will be the intersection? As I said, write it down. What will will whether it will be a subgroup or no? Intersection of uh, two subgroups. Whether it is a subgroup or no. Uh, so that is example number eight and. Uh, Yeah, let us consider one more important example. So, this is an important example. Let uh, G be any group. Why this is important? Because uh, it is it is helpful in constructing subgroups. And uh, A belongs to G. So G is any group, and A belongs to G. Take any element. now what we do is we take this so this is a notation what is the set this is identity so or or let us write a raised to i such that i equals to we take all the uh, all the powers i equals to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so on so we take all the powers of a negative powers 0 e odd powers e on everything positive all All the powers of A, so this is our H now. So verify that this is a subgroup of G. And what this is called? This is called the cyclic subgroup generated by A. It is. called the cyclic subgroup of g generated by the element a so a power 0 is i a, a, sorry a power 0 is identity e and we know inverse negative powers are also there so a power i what is the inverse a power minus i So a inverse and all a a is to minus two and all negative powers are also there. So this is a cyclic uh, subgroup generated by one element. Start with one element, you, you can generate a subgroup. Uh, for example, let us consider a particular example of S three. S three we know, right? Again, recalling because this is important. E uh, phi psi psi square phi psi and psi phi. is non abelian so these two are different element and if i take a equals to psi then what is uh, this cyclic subgroup uh, generated by psi so i have to take psi then i have to take psi square all the powers so what is psi cube psi cube is uh, nothing but this is identity then psi power 4 is again psi so what about psi inverse psi inverse But psi inverse is nothing but uh, what is psi inverse? Psi inverse is psi square. 
yes we have seen psi cube is identity so psi inverse is this is psi inverse and this is psi raised to minus 2 so psi cube is identity so actually we have this and psi raised to minus 3 is again identity so only three elements are there so similarly find out what is the cyclic subgroup generated by psi square and what is the cyclic subgroup generated by phi right we will sometimes also write instead of uh, writing like this we sometimes also write like this uh, angle brackets so this is nothing but it is cyclic subgroup generated by a why it is important because one element can generate a subgroup so if you want to generate subgroups of g, g if you want to find subgroups of g remember an element can generate a subgroup so this will be helpful in certain examples also in uh, examples uh, which are asked in net this kind of technique is important so when we are given a group and we are given one element we can generate a subgroup when we are, when we know two elements we can generate two subgroup we can talk about the intersection of that whether it will be non empty i mean of course it is non empty identity will be there but whether it is trivial or any other uh, condition is there so this this example is important given a group and an element we can generate a subgroup okay so uh, similarly if a subset is given then also we can generate a subgroup so let uh, g be a group and w be a subset of g so w be a non empty subset of g then consider this So just like cyclic group generated by A, cyclic subgroup, W be the set, be the set of all, so W be the set of all elements of G, which are represented as a product as a product of elements of w raised to we have to take the product raised to all raised to positive 0 and negative exponents So this may not be clear, but let me give you an example. So let us consider uh, S3. If I, if I take S3, again E phi psi psi square phi psi and psi phi. If we consider this, then uh, suppose W is, uh, I take the set phi and psi. Only two elements. It is a subset. It is not a subgroup. Why it is not a subgroup? Subgroup has identity. This does not have identity. Uh, and inverse is also not there. Psi inverse of psi is psi square, which is not there. So this is just a subset. So W is just a subset, not a subgroup. And uh, what is this? This is nothing but the set of all, uh, I mean, elements of G, which are represented as product of powers of elements of W. So we have to consider uh, what will be this. So this we have to consider phi also. We have to consider powers of phi, so phi square, which is identity, because we are getting phi square. Similarly, we have to consider the powers of psi also we have to consider, psi power 1 is psi, psi square also we have to consider, psi cube, so psi cube again that is uh, identity. Then, then we have to consider uh, the product also, so phi psi also we have to consider, psi phi also we have to consider, then uh, psi square phi psi square phi is nothing but uh, this is psi square phi this is nothing but uh, it is a uh, phi sorry 
Oh, yes, this is phi psi square. So all such uh, product of elements of W raised to positive negative exponents. Psi inverse. What is psi inverse? Psi inverse is psi square. Psi raised to minus 2. Psi raised to minus 2 is psi. All those negative exponents. Phi raised to minus 1. Again, phi raised to minus 1 is phi. So this is phi raised to minus 1. So all such uh, possible products and raised to the power positive 0 as well. So then this is nothing but this is we have generated the whole S3. If we just take two elements phi and psi and we take the subgroup generated by that set then that is nothing but S3. right? So similar to this again consider one more example uh, Z12. Consider the group Z, Z12, G and W. Take uh, W equals to let us take 3 and uh, let us take 9. So this is a subset. 0 is not there, identity is not there, inverse maybe there may not be there. So this is just a subset and what is a subgroup generated by W? Take all the powers. Powers here, this is addition. Huh? So Z modulo addition modulo 12. So this is addition not powers. Now here we have to take some 3 plus 3 and minus 3 and all. So what will be this? Try to find out. Right, and so he, we have to show that this is a subgroup. Show that this is subgroup. So show that this is a subgroup of G. Okay, so now let us consider one more example. This is number eleven, not ten. So this is number eleven. Uh, consider the complex numbers. So G equals to a uh, set of all non-zero complex numbers with uh, multiplication. We also denote it by this C star with multiplication and consider uh, H equals to all those uh, A plus IB all those complex numbers non-zero. So in G such that a square plus uh, b square equals to 1. So what is h? In fact h we have taken this unit circle. It a square plus b square is 1. So this is our h, this circle. Right? So we have to show that, uh, show that h is a subgroup of g. So this is nothing but it is a set of all complex non-zero complex numbers with modulus 1. So if you have two complex numbers Z1, Z2, mod Z1 is 1, mod Z2 is 1. What is mod Z1, Z2? That is mod Z1 times mod Z2 which is 1 again because so this is a subgroup. Check that this is a subgroup. Yeah, so enough uh, about examples here. Now let us consider what we have uh, taken is um, an equivalence relation we have defined. So let us take definition, given two elements, suppose uh, let G be a group and H be a subgroup of G. So for given any two elements A, B in G, uh, we say that A is uh, congruent to B modulo H and we write this is the symbol in number theory you must have studied congruence so A is congruent to B mod H if AB inverse belongs to H right? so this is one relation Similarly, we can define another relation. So for uh, A, B in G and this is uh, not given in book. Book has only given one relation congruence, but we have considered the other one also because that is also equally important. So let us uh, define something like this. So we say that uh, A is, let us call it equivalent, A is equivalent to B 
modulo h and uh, we write like this a tilde b so a is equivalent to b mod h so a is equivalent to b mod h if uh, a inverse b belongs to h okay, so g is a group h is a subgroup we say that uh, two elements a and b so a is congruent to b mod h if uh, a in a b inverse belongs to h and we say that a is equivalent to b mod h if a inverse b belongs to h Right. So this is the definition and what is the exercise that already we have discussed, uh, we state here as a lemma. Show that or not show that this is not exercise, lemma, congruence and both this equivalent, this is, this two relation. So these two are equivalence relations. This is already we have discussed and it's a simple exercise you can uh, show. This we have already discussed in the uh, Google Meet uh, last lecture. And this we have not discussed but it is very similar. We have to show that these two are equivalence relations. So it's a simple exercise to show equivalence relation. We have to show three properties. Uh, this relation is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So all these three properties, reflexivity, symmetry and transitivity are um, satisfied. So the proof I leave as an exercise. We already discussed about this relation in the Google Meet. right? And uh, let us add one remark. Why it is congruence? What is I mean, significant about this symbol? So consider the group G equals to Z. And, uh, with addition consider the subgroup nz for some n belongs to z yesterday in the google meet we had considered 2z today in the first example if you recall we had considered 5z in which we actually verified all the properties of subgroup so for any n in z consider nz so this is a subgroup of this so now h is a subgroup g is a group so if i take any a b belongs to g what is A congruent to B mod H? Recall the definition. A congruent to B mod H. If uh, AB inverse belongs to H. A congruent to B mod H. If AB inverse belongs to H. But here, G is an additive group. G is a group with addition, not multiplication, and so the above condition becomes the above condition can be written as so A is congruent to B mod H if A B inverse, this is a like product. What is B inverse? If we have an additive group, B inverse is minus B. So here we have A, A minus B belongs to H. What is H? That is NZ. Right? A, B inverse. What is inverse? So this is actually A plus, it is additive group, not multiplication. So instead of product here, we have addition. And instead of B inverse, here we have minus B. Right? So a, A and B are congruent modulo H or A is congruent to B mod H if A minus B belongs to NZ that is uh, A minus B is a multiple NZ matlab kya? NZ means A minus B is a multiple of uh, N or we can also say that N divides a minus B. Either A minus B is a multiple of N or we can say that N divides A minus B. But that means which is you remember if you have studied number theory uh, then you, you must uh, be knowing about this. Uh, so where did it go? Okay. Which is nothing but 
the definition of uh, congruence in number theory. When do we say that A is congruent to B mod N? Congruence. So we write like A is congruent to B mod N if uh, N divides A minus B. Right? So you can see that this uh, congruence is a generalization of uh, the congruence notion of number theory in, in generally in group with respect to a subgroup H and uh, this is also true if n divides uh, A minus B then n divides B minus A and therefore for this or this is equals to minus A plus B this is also true so for that we have uh, we have actually taken A inverse B belongs to H so for this we have taken A inverse B belongs to it and therefore we have taken this relation A is congruent to uh, B A is equivalent to B mod H because uh, both side it is true right so this this is why uh, it is the, the notation is given congruence so as soon as the equivalence relation is there the next obvious question will be what is equivalence class because after equivalence relation we are identifying elements a and b are identified that means they are equivalent they are congruent to each other if uh, some condition happens so we are identifying so we are grouping those elements so when we group those elements uh, we, we form we divide the group g into this uh, things which are equivalence class which we call so let us uh, let us first do that so what is uh, equivalence class of any any element so for that we have two relation but let us fix this so consider uh, this congruence first similarly uh, the other one tilde also can be done so can consider this relation congruence relation and uh, a belongs to g what is equivalence class of a so this is uh, equivalence class of A. This is called equivalence class of A. Class of A by definition, what element is in a class? Mein? All those elements which are equivalent to A, which are congruent to A. We have considered congruent relation. So all those x in G, which are so said that A is uh, congruent to x mod H. This is the definition. So equivalence class of A is nothing but all those elements which are equivalent to A. Right? So this is equivalence class of A. But what happens if I take an element in this class? Right? So now let us uh, do some analysis. So suppose uh, let x belongs to class of A. So this means what? So then A is congruent to X mod H but then by definition A is congruent to X mod H means AX inverse belongs to H recall the definition A is congruent to B mod H that means AB inverse belongs to H so then what is this AX inverse belongs to H this means AX inverse equals to H element AX inverse belongs to H so for some h, for some element h in h, ax inverse equals to h. So what will be x? Actually, I'm going to start with x is started. So we are interested in x. So what is x? So if I multiply x on both sides, right side, so what do I get? I get this, right? Multiplying uh, x on the right to both sides. So a x inverse x, x inverse x is identity, so that I don't write and I have hx now I am interested in x so I am so I am multiplying h inverse on the left side both sides from left I, in, I multiply h inverse a equals to x or if I want to write in the reverse way I can write x equals to h inverse a what is h inverse a h is in h but h is a subgroup so h inverse a belongs to h a 
right? The reason is the reason is because uh, H belongs to H and H is subgroup. So if H belongs to H and H is subgroup, so H inverse also belongs to H. So H inverse A belongs to the set H A. What is the set H A? So what we have obtained here. So therefore, we can say that uh, we started with uh, x belongs to the equivalence class of A and we got x belongs to H A. So what we have shown is equivalence class of A is nothing but it is subset of H A where what is H A? I think you have used this notation set an element. So what is H A? It is uh, elements of this form set is set of all elements of the form H A where H belongs to H h1 a h2 a all those elements where h is multiplied any element of h is multiplied to a on the left side so that is nothing but h a and what is this this is uh, we know this has uh, right coset of h in g so this is right coset of h in g we have taken an element and h a is nothing but it is right coset group theory so right it is called coset so definition also is uh, considered here itself uh, what about the other side? If we consider x in H A, can we show that x is in equivalence uh, class of A? So now let us consider the other other way around. So we'll take uh, take x belongs to H A. What we have to show? X uh, is in equivalence class of A. So x belongs to H A. This implies what? X equals to H A for some uh, H in H. So this is what we have got. What we want to show X belongs to equivalence class of A. What is equivalence class of A? So X belongs to this. That means we have to show that A is congruent to X mod H or we have to show that uh, that is equivalently AX inverse belongs to H. So what is AX inverse? So now AX inverse. AX inverse is A and X is nothing but H A. So H A inverse H A the whole inverse but then this is A then H A inverse is A inverse H inverse but uh, this is A A inverse by associativity first two and then H, H inverse so this is H inverse this belongs to H because H is subgroup so if H belongs to H H inverse also belongs to H so A X inverse belongs to H so that is um, A X inverse belongs to H this implies uh, a is congruent to x mod h so so that is or this implies uh, x belongs to the equivalence class of a so we started with x belongs to h a we have shown uh, x belongs to the equivalence class of a so what we have proved so therefore here we have proved uh, h a is subset of so the right coset of h in g is subset of the equivalence class of a and if we combine these two then what we have got is uh, in fact equivalence class of A is nothing but right coset. That is the uh, importance of this equivalence relation that we have seen. So hence we can say that uh, equivalence class of A is nothing but H A. It is the right coset or let ah, yes so let, let it be right. So equivalence class of A is uh, the right coset of uh, H in G. And if we consider this as equivalence class x in g said that of the other relation a is equivalent to x mod h suppose how consider career then show that equivalence class of uh, a is nothing but uh, a h it is nothing but it is a left coset of h in g so this is uh, a h is left coset of h in g G. Right. So let me add a statement here. So let me remove this. It's in equivalence class of A. And we add a statement. So lemma, what we have discussed is this. So the lemma is the equivalence class of A with respect to 
this relation is uh, the right coset of H in G that is right coset of H in G that is H A is nothing but the equivalence class of A which is X belongs to G such that A is congruent to X mod H and uh, there is no space I don't want to write that statement that will be given in the notes but if we consider the equivalence relation tilde then it will be the nothing but it will be the left coset which I have left as an exercise for you here to check this one right. so this is a similar exercise you can check what I whatever I have checked here right and uh, we know for any equivalence relation the equivalence classes are either uh, same or disjoint so we have the following corollary Koipan be equivalence class is why? Ka to banne sarkha hoi and ka to banne juda hoi. There is no element common in any two different distinct equivalence classes. So let, uh, so we have this corollary. So let H be a subgroup of G. Then, if we consider the congruence relation, its equivalence classes are right cosets. So then first is any two right cosets right cosets of H in G are either identical are either same so either identical or disjoint because they are equivalence classes we know any two equivalence classes Kato same way Akya ka same completely same identical or they are disjoint there is no element common equivalence classes or you can check using the set notation also and uh, similarly any two left cosets of H in G are either identical or disjoint okay because they are equivalence classes so try to solve this actually there is no need but uh, if you want to I mean uh, solve without considering this as a coset so just consider this set notation and then solve that so let me end here by giving an exercise uh, last exercise so this one before we end the lecture a very simple exercise so suppose G is a group and H is a subgroup so let G be a group and H be a subgroup of G then there is one one correspondence what is one one correspondence one one correspondence is nothing but one one or two function so then there is one one correspondence between any three things any two right cosets of H in G any two left cosets of H in G and a right coset between any right coset and left coset of H in G so just very simple exercise why we have to show one one onto function of H in G. So let me give you a hint here. I just I'll just provide hint and I think that is sufficient. So first one is there. So we have to show that there is one one correspondence between any two right cosets of H in G. That means we have to show that there is a one one and on two function between any two uh, right cosets of H in G. So what we do? So for any A B in G consider the right cosets H A and H B so B two right cosets of H in G suppose we take any two elements A and B and we consider the two right cosets H A and H B now we want to show the one one function 
So how, how we define function? So define f from h a to h b. You can easily define, you can guess. How do we define? What is an element of h a look like? What does an element of h a look like? So by, we define f by f of h a. Yaka element kaisa hoga? That is, will be of the form h a. And where it should go? We want an element of h b. So h a for some h in h. So this is mapped to h b for h in h. Right? So h a goes to h b. We have found a function. Show that it is 1 1 and on 2. Very easy. Show that it is 1 1 and on 2. So what we have taken? We have taken here uh, this correspondence. So h a going to h b. This is the first one. What about second one? We want 1 1 correspondence between any two left cosets. Left cosets will be, so we will have an element a h in left coset a h and where this will go, there is 1 1 correspondence, this will go to b h, b h belongs to the left coset b h, right. And what about third one, right coset and a left coset, right coset and a left coset. So you can consider any right coset. Suppose uh, we consider this uh, right coset H B. So we take an element here, which is this is not such that this is belongs to. So very very poor notation. Let me write uh, not like this. So H B belongs to H B, and where this element should go, this element should map to left coset so suppose i take left coset a h so for some h in it so then this is a h so h b goes to a h show that all these three functions are one one and one two and then uh, we'll discuss uh, further in the google meet tomorrow so i think i should end here i hope uh, this is clear whatever your doubts are gather together and then uh, we can discuss in the google meet uh, and then we'll continue further